Good morning, wonderful caregivers. It's Wednesday, and thank you for joining me here on Let's Talk Dementia live on Facebook. I am Carol Howell, internationally certified dementia practitioner and Amazon best-selling author. So I'm glad that you care enough to check in and see what I've got to say today. Maybe it'll be something you find interesting or amusing or Hey, maybe both. I would like to thank the sponsors of today's show who help finance the ministries of uh, Let's Talk Dementia as we reach folks in 75 countries, and they would be HD Imports, located on Flint Street Extension in Rock Hill, South Carolina. They are wonderful mechanics for Honda, Hyundai, Acura, Toyota, and Kia. Give them a call at 803-985-0985. Life in the Carolinas, the award-winning television show. You can find them at Life in the Carolinas com and on YouTube, on their YouTube channel. Mm, I think breakfast was coming back. That's a little more information than you needed, wasn't it? <laughs> but um, Life in the Carolinas, where it's never a bad day for a good story. And Beth Crosby, Editor Beth at EditorBeth.com. Oh my goodness, she is helping me get my website in tip-top shape. And I sent her, sent her a note yesterday, I've made all my changes now. Tell me what else I need to do. And I'm always glad for her help. And she is there for you too. You can find her at EditorBeth.com. Well, I wanted to read you a funny that came across Facebook. Um, I think it was just this morning. And it just made me giggle, and I thought, I'm going to share it with you. I've got to read it to you, so excuse me here a minute. But Loretta Woodward, Woodward Vinny, or Vinay, I'm not sure, Loretta, how to say your last name, says, Good morning. Here's your smile of the day. Yesterday after work, I took Mama to the doctor for her first Medicare health wellness exam. One of the requirements of the exam was for her to walk from her chair to the door of the exam room and back to her chair in 12 seconds. Failing to complete this task means the person is a fall risk. The doctor explained to mom what she was to do and set a timer to track the time. She told mom the, time, the task would start when she said go. I had no idea how this would play out, given that mom can't follow verbal directions without lots of assistance, but it's required whether the person has dementia or not. The doctor started the timer and said go. But mom did not get up immediately to get out of the chair. Then mom asked, go now? Yes, the doctor answered. Mom popped out of the chair, headed to the exam board, opened the door and kept on going. It took us about 20 more seconds to get mom back into the room. We were laughing so hard trying to get mom to turn around and come back. The doctor said, you didn't turn around and return to your chair. Mom looked at her and said, well, you said go and I went. Oh my goodness. Our awesome doctor hugged mom and said, you are my favorite patient. And mom replied, I know. And Loretta says, I have the best mom ever. Have a great day, everyone. And I just wrote her and said, I love that story. She posted a picture of her mom sitting in the exam room. Guess what mom has in her hand? A coloring book for adults. Now, I'm just going to tell you something right now. Loretta, way to go. She was really thinking ahead that, hmm, what might I be dealing with it? Maybe I need to occupy mama. She had a coloring book. Yeah. Then guess what else? She said afterwards she decided that deserved a cookie and mom got a cookie. Well, that would tell me Loretta went prepared with cookies, right? Way to go, Loretta. This is excellent caregiving, and I do love that story. When our loved ones with dementia make us giggle or do funny things, you just got to write them down and remember them. She said as if her mom didn't have dementia, she could be a stand-up comedian. Let me tell you, my mama entertained folks up until about two months before her death. Honey, your mama can be a stand-up comedian. Just let her rip. <laughs> it's so much fun. Well, um, I want to thank our viewers that are new on Roku and on Amazon Fire Stick. I'm calling yesterday's show and today's show Back to the Basics. So today is Back to the Basics Part 2. Yesterday, if you didn't catch it, go back and watch it. And it, We talked about what is dementia and the definition of dementia. The inability to think clearly that affects the activities of daily living, which are bathing, eating, ambulating, dressing, and toileting. Well, if we understand what dementia is, then what is Alzheimer's? Because I told you, they're not the same thing. There's over 200 reasons you can have dementia, and Alzheimer's is just one of those 200 reasons. It is the most common reason for dementia in our world. So we need to know then what is Alzheimer's. Well, Alzheimer's, simply put, is a disease of the brain. 
That's what it is. We can talk about beta amyloid plaque and tau and neurofibrillary tangles and all those things that make me sound so smart, but it's a disease of the brain, and that's really what we need to know. I tell you what, I got an itch going on on my nose. I got a little nerve twi twitch in there. Mm -mm -mm. So it is a disease of the brain. Um, when we realize that our loved one with dementia is having problems processing life, and then we realize the reason they have this problem is because they have a disease of the brain. Shouldn't it make us kinder, more accepting, more um, desirous of understanding what life is like? Okay, let, let me just put it in a different perspective. If your loved one has recently been diagnosed with heart disease, are you gonna be mad at them about that? Are you going to say to them, I wish you would just get your stuff together. I want to go hiking for five miles and you used to could do, go do it. Now you can't because you say you have heart disease. How dumb is that? Just get it together. Or if they had kidney failure, would you get mad at them because they suddenly were having problems with urinating with their kidneys? Would you get mad at them and go, well, three years ago when I came to visit you, you didn't have this problem. So come on, get it together. So you wouldn't do that. But we do that with folks with dementia. We go, come on, you can remember. You know, it was last week. We, we went out to eat and you got a hamburger and you didn't eat any of your french fries. You remember? And then we went shopping. No, they don't remember. So quit trying to make them do what their brain can't do because their brain has a disease. So Alzheimer's is a disease of the brain. So what does Alzheimer's do? Well, unfortunately, Alzheimer's starts years and years and years before anyone has a clue it's in the body. So you don't just wake up with Alzheimer's. Now you might wake up with dementia. Remember, there's over 200 reasons for dementia. Some of those dementias are reversible, are fixable. So yeah, you could go to bed and be okay and wake up totally confused and have a reversible dementia. But you don't just wake up with Alzheimer's that you didn't have last night. Sort of like cancer, you don't, you don't just wake up with cancer that you didn't have yesterday. Now you may wake up and find a lump in your breast, or you may wake up and realize, you know, the last few days I've had quite a few bruises and I don't know where they came from. But that cancer had been in the body causing that lump in the breast to form or those bruises to continually show up for a while before it manifested in some way in your body, right? And that is the same way with Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's is in the body years and years and years before it does enough damage to the brain that the brain reacts then to that damage. If we just got a little spot in the brain that's damaged, it may not affect how we um, go about our daily life, but we get enough damage, then we start having problems with what? dementia. We start having that inability to think clearly. So Alzheimer's takes its first bite of the brain right in the very center of the brain in a part of the brain called the hippocampus. It is a two-lobe seahorse shaped part of the brain and everything you hear today that you didn't know, new information, lands on the hippocampus. Now that may be really important information or it may be as something as unimportant as, um, I don't know, go get the clothes out of the dryer, or I need to buy milk, or my favorite show comes on today at five o'clock. You know, whatever, it doesn't make any difference. The level of importance, that new information lands on your hippocampus and it stays there on a healthy brain until you go to sleep. And when you go to sleep, it leaves the hippocampus and goes somewhere else in your brain to live forever. And then you retrieve it when you need it from that part of your brain. But with Alzheimer's, it has been eating away at the hippocampus little by little. It just has had a little buffet and been hanging out at the buffet at the hippocampus part of the buffet. See, that would be the, the dessert section of the buffet if it had been my mama. She just hung out at the dessert bar. And that's what Alzheimer's does. It hangs out at the hippocampus section of that buffet and it just eats. So that when that new information lands on the brain, on the hippocampus, it's landing on a diseased hippocampus that cannot retain that information, okay? That hippocampus has holes, it's smaller, it's shrinking, and so it falls into a diseased part of the brain. And if it cannot land on the hippocampus and stay there, then it can't move to another part of the brain where you might can retrieve that information later.
Does that make sense? It's really kind of interesting how it all works. And when you understand that, hopefully it will make it make you a better caregiver. Because if you realize that information you gave your loved one, that you're picking them up to go to the doctor for a two o'clock appointment tomorrow, and they don't remember it, and they're not ready when you get there, if you remember that information fell on a diseased hippocampus, it went into a hole, it's gone forever, and they couldn't retrieve it if their life depended on it because it's gone. It's kind of like if you had a bucket with holes in it and you poured water in it and you know you put that water in it and you expect to go tomorrow morning and retrieve that water, but there were holes in that bucket and the water went right through. You can wish all day long and demand that you have water in that bucket, but if it's not there, it's not there. And that's the way Alzheimer's is with the brain. When that information hits the diseased hippocampus, it's just gone, folks. And then after a while, Alzheimer's gets kind of bored of this part of the buffet. Then it starts moving around to other parts of the brain. And it will just eat away at different parts of the brain until finally the body shuts down because the brain cannot keep the body functioning any longer. But the part of the brain that's more intact than any other part of the brain is the right temporal lobe. And that's where prayer and poetry and art and music and dance and creative things and crafting and ooh, all those fun things are held. That's why music's so important in your world. That's why it's important in the world of folks with dementia. That's why the arts are an important part of everyday life for all of us because when that part of the brain is stimulated, it helps to reduce depression and anxiety. Um, uh, let's see, depression and anxiety. It gives us a feeling of self-worth, a feeling of going on and, and being important and, and energy. That's what it does for you, the person without dementia. It does the same thing for the person with dementia. On top of that, it lowers blood pressure. Oh yeah, and it decreases the odds that they're gonna get out and wander down the road and you not know where they are. Cause that part of the brain is more intact than any other part of the brain, even when we get through all the stages of the disease known as Alzheimer's. My mama went through all of those stages. She passed away May 31st of this year. It's been, see today is the 31st. It's been two months today. Mm, that doesn't seem right. But it, it is two months ago today, Mama went to heaven. But I can tell you right up until the end, she would respond to the song, put your sweet lips a little closer to the phone. Jim Reeves, yeah, he'll have to go. That's the name of that song. She would pat her foot or she would squeeze my hand even right up until the end because music, mm -hmm, that was in the right temporal lobe and it's more intact. So that kind of gives you something to think about you might can do with your loved one. Or as I told you that um, Loretta did, she had that coloring book for her mama. And I'm supposing that mama is something she enjoyed. My mama hated adult coloring books. Oh my goodness. She it was not her thing. But for other folks, it is their thing. So you need to keep that in mind. One little <coughs> backup on the music. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. I sure hope that goes away. Um, if you're playing music for your loved one, make sure it's the music they like. Hold on a minute. Mm -mm -mm. That's catching me hard there. <coughs> All right. I hope that gives you something to think about in your caregiving journey. Now, I'll tell you. Most every time when I get this tickle and I cough, then I sneeze. A sneeze is coming. Woo, I can't help it. <coughs> mm. I would like to thank our sponsors today. HD Imports located on Flint Street Extension in Rock Hill, South Carolina, 803-985-0985. Life in the Carolinas at www.lifeinthecarolinas.com. And Editor Beth at editorbeth.com. Be sure and check all these folks out. Tell them Carol sent you. <coughs> See, I had breakfast just before I started recording. I should not have done that. Every time I do, I get a little tickle. Be sure and check out our Amazon best-selling books, like Let's Talk Dementia. Available on our website, let's talk dementia dot com, let, yeah, let's talk dementia dot org. I'll get it right. Maybe, maybe I won't. Let's talk dementia.org. You can find all our books there and everything that we produce. And also, 
Reminisce and Worship. This is our newest book. And it's a 30-day devotional for the individual with dementia. But it's written so they can go through it on their own. Or maybe you want to work through it with them. I think it's so pretty. I love this little book. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I like it. That And a lot of our other books, they're all there on Amazon and on our website. Also, check out our podcast, also called Let's Talk Dementia. I like that phrase. And it is on iTunes, Spotify, and also on our website, letstalkdementia.org. I hope you guys have a great day. Tomorrow, we're going to pick up a little bit more on some basics. And I hope you'll join me then. See you tomorrow. Y'all have a good day. Tell your loved ones your L.O.'s. Hello from Carol. Bye-bye.